Hello everyone, welcome to Raise Aerospace Mod Development in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I present my Baikonur Cosmodrome terrain and this is just like my other terrains. It is just a Kerbal Constructs ploppable and so that's a little bit inconvenient because it's really hard to position it properly but uh, it is the only way I know how to do this efficiently. Uh, so I'm sure there's other techniques. However, Katniss makes the Cape Canaveral mod. I don't know how that works yet. So I wish I could make it like that, but I can't. Now this is just a flat terrain. It has none of the buildings on it or the flame trench in 3D yet. Though I will try to sort of dig that out maybe. Uh, that will be, that should be easy enough. But uh, yeah, it's like this. I'll try and also sort of complicate the edge of it so that it's not so unnatural looking. I'm more like this edge here. Uh, that's just because it's clipped into the terrain, by the way. It's still a straight edge. But yeah, it's just one of those things where you bring up uh, Kerbal Constructs and you plop it. Hopefully I can find some nice buildings to add to it using the other stuff that uh, is included with Kerbal Constructs, well, from Squad or from other people like OSS and all. There's possibilities here. But for now, I just have it as the flat terrain. Incidentally, it's hiding the natural space center. It is the Baikonur space center that we have, but you can sort of see the top of the VAB poking out there, but everything else, else is underground. If you choose to do this, then you should probably have indestructible facilities on, by the way, otherwise they'll all blow up. Uh, so local instance, uh, obviously I have uh, uploaded it to GitHub and I'll put a link in the video description so that you can get it. It's 150 megabytes and I tried to limit the area of it. Uh, Baikonur all, uh, all together is really really large. Oh it's actually clipping into the top part. I didn't want that. Um, uh, but okay those are the coordinates right now and it's set to a model scale of 8 so if you choose to use it 150 megabytes but it's only part of all of Baikonur. There's actually a part here and a part there. The part over here is the R16 slash Dnieper pads and then over here is the proton pads. So we don't have the proton pads here. What we do have is uh, Gagarin start which is where the Space Center currently is and our Soyuz is. That's back there actually in the bottom uh, corner there. Bottom what is that? East, bottom east corner. And then in the sort of center is the N1 and Energia pads. That's here. So that's, and then there's the Energia facilities there. And then there's the runway. That's the runway that Baran landed at, I believe. And, you know, that's the main runway for the facilities. So we've got the runway all the way up there. But uh, the I couldn't really add the rest of it because Otherwise, across, it's 56 kilometers. And so there's no reasonable way to add that uh, with any sort of, you know, reasonable size. This is already 150 megabytes. And that's after I took this chunk out. So, I mean, I'm sorry to take this chunk out, but that would have been extra. I'll, I'll think about maybe, maybe I shouldn't have done that because uh, it was, I was worried that was going to be 300 megabytes, but it ended up not being so big. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, let me just save that. Oh no, look what happens. So, yeah, placing it is a problem. On the bright side, uh, I don't know why, I, well, because I, tilt, uh, because I tilted it, it went lower. But, all right, let's raise it up again. Mm, these are the problems. And worse, uh, because it's so huge physically, and it's not really centered at the Space Center, maybe I should change that. Um, it's hard to see how to position it. Yeah, it's a little bit off, but uh, I'll take it for now. The, yeah, it's it's imperfect, but for my purposes, it's probably okay. I just wanted some sort of detail for potentially mission profile videos, and of course, we, we need to do some more work here. But anyway, let's see it launch. So, as it is right now, this is an old version of modular launch pads, uh, sorry, Alpha Mense. Ooh. Ooh. Things might have happened. Oh, uh, maybe I didn't have indestructible facilities on. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, and actually, once you've placed the terrain, 
uh, it will automatically sort of place the pad so that it will be in the right position. So the real pad is actually way below. You can sort of see it down there, um, right? You can sort of see the tank there and all that. The pad is actually down there well under the terrain, but it doesn't worry about that. Uh, it'll just plop it on the terrain because the terrain has a collider on it. Uh, it, I guess I had only turned on indestructible facilities last time I launched and it went off because of that. Okay, let's try it again. I think it was just indestructible facilities being off. And so once we tried to launch, it, uh, the terrain collided with the space center underneath there. I'm just using an old craft file, and so that's why I'm using the old modular. That was a little bit more violent than normal, but I'm using the old modular launch pads instead of the new one. Uh, I'll need to update the craft file and all, all the business and the KOS script in order to use the new modular launch pads. So this is 1.12, but uh, the modular launch pads is like from 1.8.1. Anyway, that's how it looks right now. Serious sort of mess right there. Um, but yeah, and then the Energia N1 facility there, the production stuff there, I guess. And then the runway way back there. And I'll try and make this edge seem more natural than it is right now. And probably that edge, just in case it doesn't clip into the terrain like this. But for now, this is the original release version. And yeah, if somebody knows how to do it better, I'd be glad to hear it. Um, and if you have any mods that could add the facilities here, if you know of any mods that could add the realistic facilities here, please do tell me. Because I do intend to make videos here and I'll try and make it look a little bit better. Well, the terrain should disappear soon. Oh, and booster sep time. Oh, they didn't go off. Ah, just that booster sep, the terrain goes. Though the space center remains visible there. Uh, the one that was under the terrain. I'm wondering whether this can get into orbit properly in this version. Whether I need to make some tweaks to the KOS script or... I don't know what we might need to tweak, but I know it's going to be tight. There go the fairings. Well, at this height, it all sure turns blue. It might be a little bit overly blue. Interesting. Let's see if it changes when we get into space. This is the install where I'll be, you know, recording videos about historical stuff so I want it to look good. It sort of changes. I mean it certainly isn't as blue as it was under 140 kilometers. That's a strange thing. Okay, hot fire of the second stage or upper stage. Preparation and then the little thingamajigs there. Yeah, it's still pretty tight though. I don't know if it's going to make it. We have, once again, I always mention residuals, but we do have residuals to deal with. Though, somehow, I think Raider Nick has reduced the residuals that would normally... I normally see 1%, it's 0.64 here. But it's still tough. There's a Soyuz 7KT. It's short and worse, uh, this Soyuz does not have a whole lot of delta V, 192 meters per second. So I think eventually, eventually it'll be able to complete orbit, but it's not doing much after that. So yeah, this is problematic. I'll have to figure out how to improve the KOS script, I guess. But yeah, again, it's not like we overshot or anything. I don't know exactly what to do about it. 
But, you know, it's close, so we just need a little bit more. Anyway, for now, I mean, it seems like it's just the amount that the residuals take away from us, as usual. Okay, well, there you have it. It's a little bit difficult to use because it's a Kerbal Constructs ploppable, and I apologize for that. But if you're desperate to uh, get the photo scenery, at least on the ground, then I have tried to do that minimally <laughs> but uh but then again you know the more complicated it is the larger the mod is so it's difficult and one thing you might want to do is uh when you have the terrain in place you can add the universal spawn point uh, to the other location other locations and so you could add a spawn point to the energy pads and then a spawn point to the runway and probably spawn the stock runway. I'll probably do that. Well, maybe not the stock runway. I'll probably put this shuttle runway there, the shuttle landing facility, and stuff like that. So, truce it up with some of these buildings and see what I'll see what I can do here. Uh, but the problem is uh, that doesn't seem to translate from install to install. Like, if I tried to give you the locations, the instances, they might not end up in the same place. So I think maybe if they're all in the same group, like there's a group called Baikonur here, maybe if they're all in the same group, they'll hang out together properly, but they seem to shift around sometimes, so I don't know. And when Pekka tried to give me something uh, for Boca Chica, it didn't show up in the location. I had to place it manually. So uh, maybe we can figure out how to do that properly and I'm just missing something or um, maybe we're just gonna have to all put the little things objects in uh, manually and do it the hard way. Uh, it's possible to make one big scenery with all the buildings, just like I did with the city uh, at Tampico. So I could probably make one scenery, one ploppable to uh, place all the buildings at once if I wasn't using these. That's the catch. I would have to make an additional, say, uh, 40 megabyte file with all the buildings something like that. But I'll think about it because I want to use it for historical recreations, potentially continuing the mission profile series with spiffier graphics, if you will. And so it's mainly for my own purposes, so a bit of a hack job. But I'll put the link in the video description and I'll continue to work on it. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.